Hi everyone, Quivine here from MTU's Blackrock Castle Observatory. It wasn't too long ago that we took a look at the morning sky and some interesting things that were visible. Now we are starting to come back to a warmer time of the year, so the sun will be rising a little bit earlier, but we still have a good view of a couple of planets that are best seen in the morning. So we're going to take a look at uh, the morning of the 11th, we'll, we'll move forward, so we're getting a look at tomorrow morning. Things won't change too quickly, although as we go day by day into the future, you will have to go out earlier and earlier to see the same things. But even here at about 20 past 6 in the morning, so reasonably early, we've got a very clear view of Jupiter. If you've got good eyes, and we are still looking at our view from here in the city, we can see here at just about half six even, Jupiter is still there as a little dot, although it is getting harder to see. Earlier, of course, it will be darker and you will get a better view, which also brings Saturn into view. So around six o'clock in the morning, we're here at about 10 past six in the morning, Saturn is visible, but at six o'clock it will just be a little bit darker, a little bit easier to see. If you want to use a telescope, you may want to go even earlier than six o'clock in the morning, you know, quarter to six, even at around half five in the morning. Jupiter is pretty much on the horizon, but Saturn is a little bit higher and it's really nice and dark. So this would be a great time to take a closer look with a telescope, which is something that we're going to do. But we are also going to take a look at some other areas of the morning sky, especially this area here around Sagittarius, just at the front of Sagittarius before we come to Scorpius under a dark sky because we are coming to the end of dark skies week but morning time is a particularly nice time to go and look at the sky if you are out in the countryside at this time of the year because of where we see the center of the milky way so we are going to take a closer look at jupiter and saturn as well as taking a look at darker skies but first we are going to push just a little bit earlier get those planets under the horizon so we're really looking at early in the morning you know half four in the morning really really early uh, we're going to be taking a closer look of course at various different objects and these objects will move into our evening sky as we get later in the year so make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel and click the blue bell icon so that you get notif notified when we post videos about sagittarius or scorpius in the evening which we should be doing in just a few months time so I've already mentioned Sagittarius and Scorpius, but we are going to just here about half four in the morning, really orient ourselves and make sure we're looking at the right areas. So we're looking south. You can use a compass to figure that out, or you can wait for a little bit of orange glow to come up in the east at around half four in the morning. It will be a bit too early for that. But in the south, we will have that nice reddish orange star of Antares. If you are more comfortable finding the plough in the sky, if that's an object that you can easily recognise, we can see here looking north, the plough is up pretty high. If you can find north easily, then you might as well do that first and just turn straight around, which will make sure you're looking into the south anyway. But being able to recognise the shape of Scorpius is useful if you're looking for the sky in the morning at the moment, especially if you're looking in the city. If you're in the countryside, you will have a helping hand. So if we move into the darker skies away from all of these city lights, you can see straight away there's a pretty clear indication of where south should be. The Milky Way looks fantastic in the morning at this time of the year. And this is because as we move around the sun, we see the position of the Milky Way in different places with regards to the sun. So it's very similar to phases of the moon. When the moon is full, it rises as the sun sets. When the moon is new, it's, you know, right in front of the sun. We don't get to see it at all. So just a few months ago, the center of the Milky Way was pretty much behind the sun. And that means we didn't get to see it. But as we move around the sun, as we move through the months, we'll start seeing the Milky Way closer and closer to the middle of the night, and then we'll start seeing it closer and closer to the sunset. So we're getting a great view of it here in the morning. It's going to be between Sagittarius and Scorpius, no matter when we go out. So whenever the sun is here, we won't be able to see it. And whenever these constellations are you know, rising as the sun sets, then this will rise as the sun sets. So that will be coming up in a few months time. Now that we're in a dark sky, we can definitely push a little bit closer to morning. We'll see that the Milky Way starts coming closer to vertical and then it fades away. Unfortunately, even in the darkest of skies, the bright light of the sun will cause the Milky Way to vanish. Uh, it will block it out but you will still get a view of all of these lovely stars and you will get to see these things for a little bit longer because they're not competing with any light from the city. 
This means that you can get a chance to point your telescope over at the planets. Now, Jupiter is pretty close to the sunrise here. Saturn is luckily a little bit further away. As we move later into the month, they'll move even further away. So we'll get to see them in darkness a little bit clearer, a little bit higher above the horizon. So you may want to wait, uh, you know, an extra few days or even an extra, uh, just an extra few weeks if you'd like to get a darker view of these planets. But here we are, you know, about quarter to six, we can take a look at Jupiter. This low to the horizon, we will be looking at it through a lot of that atmosphere. But we can see here we've already got a nice clear view of its four moons. Uh, it looks like the morning of the 10th. Uh, I'll move us back to the morning of the 11th, just to be fair. Uh, the morning of the 11th, we get to see three of Jupiter's four largest moons, which is good. Uh, that's three out of four. That, that's a pretty good score. We can see if we move forward to the morning of the 12th, we can in fact see four of them. As long as we're taking a pretty close look with a smaller telescope, it would look more like three. But you can just keep going out on different nights. Eventually, you will get to see all four of them because they do orbit around Jupiter pretty rapidly. Rapidly. Taking a closer look, I'm always interested to see if the Great Red Spot is visible. The Great Red Spot is huge, is as big as the planet Earth. It's a massive, massive storm or hurricane, but it's only visible when it's facing us. So depending on what day you go out and what time of the night, the Great Red Spot may or may not be visible. So it looks like the morning of the 11th. We do have one of Jupiter's moons in front of Jupiter casting a shadow. So I believe this is Io. It is. Uh, so that's really, really nice. We can see uh, what would be an eclipse of sorts, or uh, at least uh, a transit uh, of Io in front of the sun happening there on Jupiter. But the Great Red Spot, this massive, massive hurricane, it's a bit more famous, and it's something a lot of people really like to see. So Jupiter, always a great planet to take a closer look at with a telescope. It is so big and so bright. We're doing this in the countryside. You'll, of course, get a better view without light pollution, but you can point your telescope at these planets from the city as well. It just won't look as good and that's kind of the sacrifice we always make if we try to do astronomy from the city. So we can see here starting without zooming in too much at all we can already see this orange object here next to Saturn. This is Titan, its largest moon. We saw with the moons of Jupiter they can sometimes become uh, too close to the planet or in front of the planet which makes them difficult to see. With Titan because of the angle uh, at which Saturn presents itself we see Titan moving around Saturn a little bit better. It doesn't completely get blocked out by the planet uh, unless we're using a very small telescope. It's easier to see when it's far out at the side, but once you zoom in a little bit, Titan never gets blocked out by Saturn because of this angle. We can see Saturn's pole here, so as Titan moves around, it almost appears to go above and below the planet. Now Saturn and Jupiter both have loads of moons. We can usually only see the larger ones, and it's the same with Saturn here. We're only seeing the larger moons. As we take a closer look, the rings become very, very clear. You get to see the fuzzy portions in the rings, the gaps in the rings, but that does take a very large telescope. Uh, luckily, uh, even with a telescope, you know, six, seven inches wide, uh, you can see something like this, where the gap between the planet and the ring is visible. So you can definitely see that Saturn has rings and recognize that it's the ringed planet with a small telescope, but getting real detail in the rings does take something a little bit bigger. Uh, Titan's orange color comes from its atmosphere. It's one of the, it's the only moon with a thick permanent atmosphere that we know of. And after we get something flying on Mars, the uh, Ingenuity Copter on Mars, uh, the next target is in fact Titan. Uh, people want to send a quadcopter or possibly an octocopter, so almost like a double drone, uh, to the moon Titan. Thanks to its thick atmosphere, flying should be possible. So. They're the planets. We'll quickly move back into real, real darkness just to take a look into the center of the Milky Way. For anyone who hasn't seen us doing this recently, this center portion of the Milky Way is really, really rich, full of stars. And that's because there's actually more Milky Way to look at here. We're three quarters of the way out from the edge of our, out from the center of our galaxy. We're only a quarter of the way from the edge. So there's just not as much stars and gas between us and this part of the Milky Way and there's a lot more stars and dust and gas between us and whatever is out in this direction of the Milky Way. So we always see a lot more over here. If we zoom in just a little bit more, we'll start to see more distinct groups of stars and clusters, a lot of gas, a lot of nebulae. There's really plenty to look at once you're looking into the center of the Milky Way and you can do it from the city, but let's say, for example, here, uh, this is, you know, you need a, a very good pair of binoculars or a small enough camera, a very wide field of view to see everything we're seeing here. But this is a lovely view. And if we pull ourselves back into the city, we will lose the vast, vast majority of that detail. You can see we're still getting a hint of some cloudiness up here. That's the Sagittarius star field. The nebulosity around Antares seems to have disappeared entirely. We're really only getting a faint suggestion of the extent of the Milky Way. 
which is something we can see perfectly once we're out in the countryside. So getting out in the morning, it's a good thing to do whether you're in the city or the countryside over the next few days because you do have those planets coming up, Saturn and Jupiter. I'll bring back their names. Uh, there we go. But if you are able to get a view from a darker sky, the Milky Way makes it truly, truly worthwhile. So I hope you get a chance.